Welcome back. He made history as the first person with an autism diagnosis to play basketball in the Big Ten. And now he's making a living by helping to ensure young people like him are not the target of bullies. Anthony Ianni has a new book out now from IU Press called Centered Autism Basketball and One Athlete's Dream. He says it's all about his journey from being told his life would be dramatically different to making it onto one of college basketball's biggest stages. And then when I was five years old, a group of doctors and professionals had told my family that because I have autism, I would barely graduate from high school, never go to college, never be an athlete, likely end up in a group institution with other autistic individuals uh, like myself for the rest of my life. Um, I wasn't told this until my freshman, going into my freshman year of high school. So that kind of became my motivation to go out and prove those people and then the other doctors, the next areas I have my life wrong. Uh, I had to work extremely hard at everything, especially school, basketball, and my social life. Um, you know, I had a lot of support from teachers, friends, coaches, teammates, family. And so I ended up graduating from Oklahoma's High School in 2007, where I then went on to Grand Valley State for two years on a full scholarship for basketball. Didn't quite work out for me there, so I decided to go live my lifelong dream, which was to play for Coach Tom Izzo and be a Michigan State Spartan. You know, for example, if a coach told me to go stand on the block of the post, you know, you, you most of the time people would just, you know, you know, any other player would just go block the block, you know, try to move block the block. You know, I would stand right on that block. I wouldn't move from that block because my, the coach specifically told me to stand on the block. And in my mind, my in my autistic brain, I'm thinking, okay, just stand on the block because that's what he told you to do. Um, so my mom would just go, you know, why are you standing on the block? And I'm like, well, coach told me to stand on the block. And so, but I also had some coaching from my parents too. Like, no, you can move side to side. You can do this and do that. Um, but when it came to like learning the plays and different drills, especially when I got older in high school, um, that was difficult for me to pick up early on too. Um, but luckily I had a great coaching staff at Oklahoma's high school with Dan Stoltz and Carter Briggs who, you know, immediately kind of understood how I learned because I'm one of those individuals, especially in the classroom where, you know, I took things, I was a slow learner. I took things step by step and process by process. Like I couldn't just like, mold everything together if I was like if I was a straight A student like bang like everything's done no like for me I had to like take everything step by step and minute by minute because that was the best way for me to process things and learn things and still is to this day you know it's funny Ray Weathers who used to play at Michigan State for Coach Izzo um, when Coach Izzo first started in the mid 90s Ray came back 15 years later to get his degree he was watching practice and he watched you know how hard I worked in practice and one of our managers walked up to me afterwards and said hey you know what Ray Weathers just called you I was like, no, what? And they go, well, he called you the, the Rudy of Michigan State basketball. And to me, that was a huge compliment. But then when I, but then when my story came out and when I started talking more and more about my life story and looking back on my life, I was like, you know what? Like the similarities are there. It's a different, obviously different results, but you know, I want to be this younger generation's underdog story. I want to be that new Rudy for people to look up to and know that, hey, any dream is possible despite all these obstacles and challenges in the way of life.